<laughs> I'm actually, damn, I'm quite nervous. It's been a while. I haven't been in front of camera. I'm talking about Lilius Addy today, who was a witch, and from what I remember, because I didn't put the note down, smart me, she was from Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. It was definitely the British Isles, somewhere in the British Isles, but I, I think it was Ireland, that she was living and tried for as well, or went on a, on a trial. I'm getting ahead of myself, but besides the point. So. Lily Sadi. Not much is said about her life. Not much is being uh, disclosed about her life in general. She was somewhere in her late 50s to early 70s, based off her age. There is actually a picture, which I'll put up later, which goes into the story, so just wait for that and you can judge for yourself. So, yes, estimated to be in her late 50s to early 70s. Besides that, not much is being said. No kin, no relatives is being mentioned in any of the trial records or anything, any other documents that I was able to find. So, there is not much that's being said about her in general. So, the actual story begins with one called Jean Bizet, BZ, and Helen Anderson. I will just use Jean and Helen. Now that that's out of the way, let's start. So Jean Bizet was somebody that was known in the area where everybody lives. So everybody is living in the same area. Jean, Helen, Lilius, everybody is living in the same area. And Jean was known to actually be uh, quite a heavy drinker. She did like her liquors, obviously. And on the infamous day of Tuesday the 13th of whatever the fucking month it was, because it wasn't mentioned, 1704, she came to the house of Helen, noticeably drunk by the accounts of uh, witnesses. She had a couple more drinks, I assume, because why the fuck not? If you already started, why not finish? And passed out, basically, in Helen's house. After waking up, she started screaming that Basically, Lilius Addy is going to come for her and that she's going to come for children of other people, is what I translate. Beware, lest Lilius Addy come upon you and your child. That was enough for Lilius to get rested and tried for witchcraft. So, this is where things get interesting because at the actual she had actually not come to the trial, so only thing that was done in the process was questioning of witnesses. Now, when Jean, she was noticeably drunk even in the actual questioning part. So when she was questioned on Lilius, she was noticeably drunk and by the eyewitnesses and other people around, they all saw that she was like under the influence, okay? So her account, was basically what got Lilius into jail and, and into trial, as well as that of uh, Anderson, because I think they were both witnesses, but everybody, everything started actually because of Jean, and then Helen turned, joined the actual, I don't know. Everything starts with Jean. Okay, so now we go into the actual trial. So the actual trial was. Um, <laughs> didn't even happen. So the only thing that did happen was the questioning and torture, basically. Um, during the actual questioning of Lilius, she, after some time, admitted that she was in league with the devil. She also noted that the devil made her renounce her baptism or denounce her baptism and made her lay with him carnally. She had also made notes of how the devil actually looked. She had described him as being or having cold skin and being very pale as well, being quite tall 
and having cloven hooves, which is interesting, fashion detail, um, and also having a hat. And I think a lot of the trials at that time that I have gone through, there is a lot of accounts of people describing the devil as being a tall, dark figure with a hat. And cloven hooves was something that was actually noted quite a bit, like people hearing the cloven hooves and then seeing a tall, dark figure with a hat. Oftentimes they did describe that he was quite handsome, but sort of standoffish in that sense, as she had said, like cold skin, pale, like, he didn't get a bloody son, that's for definite. <clears throat> Continuing on with the story, she had also described accounts of coming to gatherings with other witches and, and uh, the devil himself, basically, where there would be sex orgies and dancing, basically, and just all around <laughs> a lot of fun. Lilius had also noted that the devil brought her nothing but misery and poverty, which I think a lot of people had the idea that witches would like have fucking money, that they would be successful or whatever, that they would have a lot of things because they were in league with the devil, so they would do evil to other people in order to get what they wanted, so they would have what they want at the end of the day. But she had said herself that the devil brought her nothing but poverty and misery. So she was questioned about other people that were present in these gatherings as far as uh, their names, who they are and stuff like that. And she had never given a name of a person. She had of an unknown person that is. So what she did was actually give names of people that would have already been convicted and or tried and burned for witchcraft. So those people would be in public record of some sorts uh, for their trials and, and what they were accused for. So she had used those names to say like, oh, that's like my neighbor, like fucking, I don't know, Karen over there and she was a witch with me, but like, we already burned her back. The act itself of doing that, I think was very, very much telling of her character and who she was as a person, because as I said, like her face looks like so fucking sweet, like just an old grandma that you want to share a cup of tea with, right? Her life was not only interesting uh, while she was actually alive, but there is actually a lot of uh, interesting facts about her afterlife or what happened to her remains after her death. So she did not come to the trial itself. That is one part that I forgot to mention. She hanged herself uh, a few hours after her last trial. Uh, the date itself is not noted. With the circumstances at hand, she was actually not burned as the tradition or custom at that point was to actually burn the witch preventing like her to kind of come back from the dead because if she's ash like there is no chance that the bones will rise and start affecting people so she was not burned but she was buried at a known site of uh, at the shores of Toriburn. it was a known place that um, people who have committed suicide were be buried at. Uh, an interesting fact is that she was buried under a 500 kilogram stone slob in order to prevent the devil from raising her from the dead and coming back to life. So they did take measures but like if the devil can bring somebody back to life like can he not fucking remove like a 500 kilogram slob of stone just be like that's that. I would imagine so, but okay. So her remains were left untouched for about 150 years or so. Her bones were exhumed in 1852. Now the bones were kind of a spread around among different people. I think they were for a time in a museum and then taken to private collections and just got separated. So it's it's not known where they are uh what was left 
as sort of the the only thing that kind of brings her into the modern age is that there was a photo taken of the actual skull which led scientists in 2017 to actually be able to create a general reconstruction of her face uh, which the photos will be somewhere in the video I'll just post them along and post them here as well or at least try to um, so yeah her her skull uh, or her face at least was recreated so we get some sort of idea what she would have looked like so there is at least one thing that we get out of this as far as being able to see what type of a person would have actually been convicted and tried for these horrendous deeds and yeah another thing was that her coffin was sliced up and they made walking sticks how fucking disrespectful is that like they made walking sticks out of her coffin i will leave links to both the trial records or the trial transcripts and the actual link to the i think it was the institute i don't know which exactly that did the reconstruction that has the article on it so i will put that as well beneath so you can have a look if i have missed anything or you would like to get further into the actual topic see what was kind of going on at the time and, and what people were saying with the trial tra trial transcripts this is future editing g i wanted to quickly come in and say that the research for this story was done a couple of months ago actually so i've been sitting on this story for a while and i may have missed certain things so do check out the links that I post below just to make sure to catch up on any information that I may have missed. As you will see in the video, I have been talking a lot about different things and just missing certain things. So check the links below. It's a really beautiful story. So hope you like it. With that, I'm going to leave you. I hope you have a bloody amazing rest of your week and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video, probably a couple of days from now. So hope you have fun.